Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, we just want to answer a very brief question. What happens when you hide a section when using zone visibility? This was a question that someone asked in the comments, and I thought, let's try and make a video and show you how I'm going to try and answer the question. It might not be the official answer. Obviously, we'll reach out to Tableau to see if that's the case, um, but I can show you how I might be able to find out the answer using performance recording. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so here we are in Tableau. Now, the key to doing this test is you want to make sure you do the performance recording at the very start. So you don't actually open your workbook, you open Tableau without opening a workbook, and then you go over to the top, and this is how you open the performance recording option. You go to help, you go to settings and performance, and then you select start performance recording. Once you do that, nothing happens. It essentially runs in the background, but the performance recording is running because if you go to help, go to settings and performance and stop performance recording is there, that means it's already running. Now we've done that, we can actually go ahead and open the workbook. So I'm opening up the demo workbook that I used in that particular uh, demo, and you can see it loads up the workbook. I'm going to wait a few seconds and just fill the air because what I'd like to do is have a gap between when I loaded the workbook and the next activity that I do so I can see very clear moments in time when I did activities in the workbook. If you do things too quickly, it's actually quite hard to see it very clearly. So now that that's been running for a while, I'll go ahead and select furniture. Furniture is actually a different zone that's enabled using a parameter actions. Go and check the video to find out how that works. If I go ahead and select furniture, you'll see it loads up a different part of the chart. I'll wait a few seconds, fill some hair, fill some time. Maybe I'll skip ahead in the video by cutting it right here. Okay, and we're back. And now I'm gonna go ahead and select office. We're gonna wait a while again, and I'll cut away the gap. Okay, and now we're back. We've let the recording run for some time, and now I'm gonna select technology again to let that run for a bit. And that's pretty much it. That's all we're gonna do. We're just gonna click on the different zones. I've done nothing else. I've not used any filters. I've not generated anything. Just to show you what a filter would do, what I will do is go ahead and deselect accessories and copiers from the technology section so we can see that working on the technology worksheet. But nonetheless, I think we're pretty much good to go. We can go ahead and stop the performance recording. To stop a performance recording, you just go up to the help option again, go to settings and performance and select stop performance recording. That's pretty much it. Now, Tableau will open up a workbook which shows you your performance recording. So let's just wait for that to load. It actually loads it up on a different screen for me. So I'll bring it up here on the main screen and just wait for it to load and we'll set it up full screen. Now, the tricky thing with this workbook is just understanding it. I need to do another video on this because I did do a video on performance recording, but I realized I didn't explain this clearly enough. So we'll definitely do that again. But nonetheless, you get two things out of this. You get this dashboard, which shows you an overview of all the different events. You can see here now why I was leaving gaps in between the different recordings, because you can see there's a, there's a timeline here. And then there's a second dashboard, which is the detailed view, essentially from top to bottom, showing you all the activities that happened when you load the workbook. And each of those happens at different times. You can actually see the different gaps I created between the activities. So you can see this is the first time I opened the workbook. Then there's another activity. Then there's another activity. Then there's another one. And then there's these two filter actions that I quickly clicked on at the very end uh, in quick succession. So I clicked on technology and then I deselected the filter. So that actually did a did a little bit of a, a change to the way this is working. So um, it's kind of like an interesting workbook to sort of dig around. And um, yeah, we're going to try and get to the bottom of this. So if I go back to this worksheet, this timeline worksheet, this is actually the most useful one. It's what we're going to use for this analysis. If I open it up, it's just a classic dashboarding problem. You see, you've got a timeline going across the tops with start time, and you've got the different rows. Now, the rows are structured in the structure of the workbook, but that's not what we're interested in. We want to just see the chronology of all the events as they happened. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a few of these items onto the detail pane just so that we can see them more clearly. And we'll go ahead and just put them on detail. I don't want to lose them completely from the um, uh, visualization because I think it's a useful sort of visual element to have. Uh, we'll just put it on, we'll just put everything on here. The event is already on the dashboard so we can go ahead and remove that. And the start index is going to be good enough for me. So the start index is basically sort of that vertical um, timeline that you see. And now when I do that, you'll see that each of the activities is very, very clearly kind of uh, broken down. And actually, if I if I show you this, if I go from the top, you've got the initial sort of um, elapsed time from when I open up the workbook and you go down, and there's a bunch of things that happen right at the beginning. And then there's another bunch of things here. And if I move my face to the left, 
you keep seeing each of these activities. So each time I click on something, Tableau is doing something different. Now, the key thing is I don't know what those activities are. So let's go ahead and actually do this. Let's bring the events back on. So let's put this here in the top right hand side. And you can see the events here are these events here. So passing, executing query. So let's go ahead and um, is it the event name that we want? Let's try the event. Let's just put the event after the starting index. So yeah, we get a slightly better sort of context here. And then I think the thing, next thing I want is the worksheet. So let's go ahead. We'll keep the worksheet on there, but let's um, go ahead down here and bring the worksheet just after to see, okay, what's going on. So. Anything not related to a worksheet comes up as null in the worksheet column. So you've got the parsing, uh, which is basically processing the workbook. That's what the XML essentially is based on. You've got the connecting to data source. Uh, you've got the query that runs. And then you've got the compilation of the query. So executing and compilation, I just think of them all as query activities. And then here, this is the secret answer. You're computing the layout. So it actually computes the layout for furniture, office and the technology line as well. So it actually computes the charts, but interestingly, it doesn't say it's rendering them at all. So it computes the charts, which means it's doing all the calculations required for them, but it doesn't render them. At that point, there's a couple of rendering activities. Now, these aren't necessarily linked to a chart. So it's difficult to know if this is the rendering of the entire dashboards including the hidden zones or not. So let's go down here. There's a computing layout, and uh, this is basically the first time we click. There's a bunch of rendering. There's another computing layout, a bunch of rendering, another computing layout, a bunch of rendering, and another computing layout. So we don't see any other um, uh, sort of query events, essentially. Uh, and so my gut instinct is that it's actually loading all of the different jobs in the background. It's computing the layout, it's doing the maths, it's loading the data set, um, and it's doing the rendering, but it's just not showing it. And so um, the, the, when you actually switch between them, that's when it draws the shapes that you actually see. So it's doing all the work that it needs to, apart from rendering that visualization right in front of you. And then it's switching between uh, the different tabs. That's what I think this is saying to me. I think that's what I think this is sort of uh, coming to you. Now, it's really, <laughs> it's really hard to be absolutely clear about that. And um, because some of these activities, you know, the way Tableau is built, I don't know how it's built. So I don't actually know all the quirks that sit behind some of this. But that's what this uh, data seems to suggest. Um, what I What is interesting is all the query is done at the beginning. All the queries are being done at the beginning. So if you've gone and used zone visibility and you've done some nasty queries behind one of the sheets, it still looks like it's going to be loaded at the beginning. It's not going to wait until you activate the zone to sort of set it up. Um, so that's my thought on this. That's what I think is going on. I'm, I'm going to ask Tableau the question and we'll, we'll try and put a, a semi-official answer in the comments below um, once I get sort of a, a bit of clarity on that. But nonetheless, um, that's how you can sort of find out what's going on. And this might help you debug what's going on with the slow workbook when you open it up. You can actually use this technique to go and find what's going on inside of a workbook and hopefully get a better perspective of what's sort of slowing you down, what's taking time. This workbook was pretty fast. If I loaded something from a database, you'd see much bigger query sections as well. And uh, don't forget, if you if you want to see what some of these uh, things look like, so if I go down here, for example, I want to see what the queries actually look like, I can click on the green uh, uh, query items and it'll actually load the query here. So I can see the SQL that's actually being sent to the database in case I want to debug that. So that's just, you know, hopefully a really useful uh, trick that you guys can use. But I just wanted to show you how I'd sort of come to that conclusion and how I'd find the answer. Hopefully you found that video useful. Um, if not, let me know in the comments below nonetheless, and I'll catch you in the next video. So you made it to the end of this video. I always add bloopers, and for this one, I think it needed context. So many times I'll record a video maybe two, three, four times, and I'll basically reject every single version of that video until I get the version of the video that I want. Because as you know, a lot of my videos are done from start to finish without very few cuts. So this is one of those rare videos where I'll actually show you the start and end of a previous take that I did. And there's always something funny that I do at the end of a take that I know I'm going to reject as soon as I start it because I sort of get the feeling that the video is going to be a bad video. So I can, I can really feel it, but I finish the video nonetheless just for the practice of doing the video. And then once I get to the end, I always end it by saying, ah, this isn't good enough. I, I cancel the take and then I, you know, get rid of the, the clip. But in this case, this is what you see. 
Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, we're going to answer a very, very brief question. What does zone visibility do for... So it's a, it's a little bit of a mind maze to sort of explain everything. Um, and I don't think I did a great job. So I'm actually going to record a second take of this video because this wasn't, this wasn't good enough. 